Hello, I'm Camilia and this is Kini News. The MACC has recorded the statement of former Prime Minister Mohidin Yassin. This is in relation to the probe into Bersatu's bank accounts, which have been frozen. Bursatu President Muhyiddin Yassin was reported to have given his statement to the Malaysian Anti-Corruption Commission yesterday. This was over the MACC's investigations into allegations that Bursatu received contributions amounting to around 300 million ringgit from some 10 contractors who received various projects when the party was running the government. According to a report in Utusa, Malaysia, Muhyiddin had his statement recorded at the MACC headquarters in Putrajaya from morning until noon yesterday. It was reported that the investigation is in the final stages and will be sent to the Attorney General's chamber for further action when completed. A source also told Utusan that the MACC had summoned other top Bersatu leaders for questioning before this. Earlier this month, Malaysia Kini reported that MACC had frozen two of Bersatu's bank accounts to facilitate investigations under the Anti-Money Laundering and Anti-Terrorism Financing Act. The revelation came just one day after the party declared its 2020 and 2021 accounts in an attempt to counter allegations of corruption. Muhyiddin, who again denied claims Bersatu received ill-gotten funds while he served as Prime Minister. He added that he would write a letter to the MACC with a request to unfreeze its accounts to ease the party's operations, including paying wages to its staff and office rentals. Mahathir has responded to the government's decision to classify the details of the settlement with former Attorney General Muhammad Apandi Ali over his dismissal. Mahathir said he was mystified on why it was kept a secret. Former Prime Minister Dr. Mahathir Mohamad has questioned the government's decision not to reveal the details of the settlement with former Attorney General Muhammad Apandi Ali on compensation for his dismissal from the post. In a post on Twitter, he said he was mystified by the decision by de facto law minister Azalina Othman Said. He added that Apandi, the former AG under Najib Abdul Razak's government, had made his demand publicly and even named the amount, which was 2.23 million ringgit. He added he had reason to find out why it was kept a secret because he did not think Apandi deserves to be compensated at all. Mahathir said this in response to Azalina's written parliamentary reply on the matter. On February 14th, Azalina said the matter had been put under the Official Secrets Act 1972 in accordance with the agreement that the terms of the settlement be kept secret. The minister was responding to Ipoh Barat MP M. Kula Segaran, who asked for the amount of compensation paid to Apandi in the settlement. Mahathir had terminated Apandi's service as the AG in June 2018 amid the 1MDB probe. Apandi and the government reached an amicable settlement over the lawsuit on April 13, 2022. Hassan Karim has praised Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim over the probe into the Pandora Papers leak. He also called on the MACC to not be selective with their investigations. Pasir Gudang MP Hassan Karim has called on the MACC to not be selective with its probe into those implicated in the Pandora Papers. He said the MACC should investigate everyone and not pick and choose. Hassan said this is as the public already knows the names of those who were implicated in the documents. He said the truth of the content of the Pandora Papers must be proven in court and if those named are found to be clean, then that is the end of the matter. However, he added that if it is true that they accumulated wealth outside the country to evade tax, then they must be prosecuted in court. Hassan also praised Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim for the probe into the Pandora Papers leak. He pointed out that it did not happen under the previous Ismail Sabri Yaakob administration. He said the MACC only got the courage to investigate the Pandora Papers issue after Anwar became Prime Minister. On February 13, the MACC recorded statements from a former minister regarding his offshore wealth exposed in the Pandora Papers leak. It also summoned a former prime minister's son for questioning the next day. 
The investigation is reportedly still at an early stage and more people will likely be questioned in relation to the Pandora Papers soon. Former Batangkali Assembly Person Harumaini Omar has expressed shock after finding out that his seat in the Selangor State Assembly had been vacated. Selangor Pejuang Chief Harumaini Omar has expressed shock that his seat in the Selangor State Assembly has been declared vacant. The former Batangkali Assembly person also denied that he had been absent from the State Assembly sittings for six months. According to the Star, Harumaini said that he had attended the sitting in July last year and the session ended in early August. He added that the next session was in November and questioned if the six months also include the months that the assembly was not in session. He claimed he had not attended the sessions because he was unwell and would speak to lawyers on the matter. Yesterday, Selangor Legislative Assembly Speaker Ng Sui Lim said Harumaini had been absent from the assembly for more than six months without leave and had declared the seat vacant. He said Harumaini's last appearance at the Selangor State Assembly was July 27 last year. He added that there were no records of Harumaini explaining his absence from the Selangor Assembly meeting between November 23, 2022 and December 6, 2022. Shahrizad Abdul Jalil has marked her return to active politics by joining the race for the Amno Women's Wing Chief position. Shahrizat Abdul Jalil has joined the race for the Amno Women's Wing Chief position. Shahrizat filed her nomination papers today through a representative at 11 a.m. When contacted by Malaysia Kini, she declined to comment and only confirmed that she had made the filing. Shahrizat held the position from 2009 to 2018. In 2018, she decided not to defend her position as Wanita Amno Chief to make way for new blood. At the time, she said that she had been in the field for a long time and it was time to give way to those who are younger. She said she had worked with many Wanita members and many are capable of leading. Shahrizad will be facing her successor, Nur Aini Ahmad, who is the Parit Sulong MP. The election for the leadership of all Amno wings will take place on March 11th. Sources told Malaysia Kini that Shahrizad's decision to restart her political career was due to the internal conflict in Wanita Amno. Amno has appointed Tanku Zaful and Lokman Nur Adam as a member of the party's Supreme Council. The decision was made at the Amno Supreme Council meeting last night. Selangor Amno Treasurer Tanku Zafrul Abdul Aziz has been appointed as a member of the Amno Supreme Council. This was decided during the council's meeting held at the Amno headquarters in Kuala Lumpur last night. Amno Information Chief Isham Jalil confirmed Zafrul's appointment when met by reporters after the meeting. Previously, Zafrul has confirmed that he will be contesting for a Supreme Council spot in the Amno party election next month. He had said that he plans to join the council to serve the party better, including to rejuvenate Amno. Meanwhile, Lokman Noor Adam said he is rejoining the party's Supreme Council. In a post on Facebook, Lokman said he was informed that his termination has been revoked by Amno Deputy President Muhammad Hassan. Lokman was sacked from the party in February 2020. He was reinstated as an ordinary member of the party in September 2021. During the meeting, the Amno Supreme Council also approved the application by a former Besatu Vice President to rejoin the party. Former Besatu Vice President Muhammad Rafiq Naiza Mohidin has rejoined Amno. In a statement, Rafiq said his application to rejoin Amno was approved by the Amno Supreme Council last night. Rafik said that he was aware that his decision to join Amno now will not be popular and some people will not agree or accept it. However, he believed that his political career, which has been full of challenges since the beginning and which today has taken him back to Amno, is the will of God. He added that he was not returning to Amno just because they were part of the federal government. 
According to Rafiq, he had decided to leave Bersatu and support AMNO before the 15th general election, and at the time, they didn't know who would be in the government. Rafiq quit Bersatu in October last year after the party dropped him as a candidate for GE15. Between 2018 and 2021, he was part of the Malacca cabinet. He failed to retain the Paya Rumput seat during the 2021 Malacca election. And that is all from me today. For more stories, you can go to kinitv.com. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook for the latest news updates. If you'd like to support independent media, do consider subscribing to militiakini.com. I'm Kimilia. Thanks for watching.